Again, <clears throat> next part would be the languages of anatomy. So again, you have to be well versed with all of these directional terms. So since we are utilizing you know, the online system, might as well let's that's um maximize our learning through video. So let's watch this video first. How do I play this? Ayan. Anatomical directional terms. A directional language of anatomy exists in order to minimize confusion when discussing areas or specific points on the body. This directional language or terminology is used in reference to the anatomical position. The anatomical position is when a person stands erect, face pointing forward, arms at the sides, palms facing forward, and feet also pointing forward. If everyone... So, okay, so don't forget no, the correct anatomical position. That's face forward, arms at the side, palms face forward, and feet point forward. Looking at the body in the exact same position, there will be less confusion when discussing anything related to anatomy. We're going to start with superior and inferior. Superior means toward the head, but it can also mean upper or above. Inferior means toward the feet, but it can also mean lower or below. So we would say that the heart is located superior to the small intestine, or we could say the small intestine is located inferior to the heart. Next is anterior and posterior. Anterior means further to the front or in front of. Posterior means further to the back or in back of. So we would say the sternum is anterior to the heart and the heart is posterior to the sternum. Sometimes the terms ventral and dorsal are used in place of anterior and posterior where ventral means anterior and dorsal means posterior. Anterior and posterior can also be used to describe how you're looking at the body. While the body will always be referenced from the anatomical position, it can be viewed from an anterior view, meaning looking at the body from the front. And it can also be viewed from the posterior view, meaning looking at it from the back. Medial and lateral are another set of directional terms. Medial means toward the midline of the body and lateral means toward the side of the body or away from the midline of the body, where the midline is an imaginary line that divides the body into left and right halves. So we would say that the heart lies medial to the lungs, or you could say that the lungs lie lateral to the heart. Lateral can also be used to describe how you're looking at the body. While the body will always be referenced from the anatomical position, it can be viewed from the lateral view, meaning looking at the body from the side. Next is proximal and distal. Proximal and distal are terms that are usually used when describing parts of the appendicular body. Remember that the axial body consists of the head, neck, and trunk, and the appendicular body consists of the limbs or appendages that are added to the axial body. Proximal means closer to the axial body or toward the trunk of the body, and distal means further from the axial body or further from the trunk of the body. So we would say the thigh is proximal to the foot, or you could say the foot is distal to the thigh. Superficial and deep are another set of directional terms. Superficial means closer to the surface of the body, and deep means further away from the surface of the body. So we would say the sternum is superficial to the lungs, or the lungs are deep to the sternum. Remember, this is the case when we're looking at the body from the front or anterior view, when it's in the anatomical position. And that be the anatomical directional terms. Okay, so ayan, again, don't forget the correct anatomical position that is your body is erect and feet slightly apart. Yung kanina, yung, actually that is what we call the standing at attention. Except that the palms face forward and the thumbs point away from the body. So again, review that supine person is lying face upward. Your prone position is your person is lying face downward. That's kulob. So, these directional terms, they allow us to explain where one body structure is in related to another. So, again, anterior ventra or ventral, posterior or dorsal, superior, inferior, proximal to the actual no? distal. Ayan. So, again, that's, that's your, um, that's the, summary 
So don't be confused of the directional term. So your axial part, they make up the main axis of your body that includes your head, neck, and trunk. Your appendicular part, they consist of the appendages or limbs which are attached to the body's axis. Your sagittal plane, your sagittal plane is a vertical plane that divides the body into right and left parts. So sagittal plane that lies exactly in the midline is the median plane or mid sagittal plane. Your frontal plane, they divide your body into anterior and posterior and your transverse they run horizontally from left to right, dividing the body into superior and inferior parts. So again, your sagittal plane, hinahati ng sagittal plane, ang body mo into right and left. Your transverse plane, your transverse plane, they divide the body into superior and inferior. While your frontal plane, they divide the body into anterior and posterior. So again, sagittal, right and left, frontal plane, anterior and posterior, transverse superior and inferior part so ayan next is we have your body cavities and membranes if you poke and prod at your abdomen you might be tempted to think that your body is a solid mass bone, muscle, organs, and tragically for some of us, fat. But it turns out that our bodies actually contain many important spaces or cavities. Some of these cavities, like for example the nasal cavity, open to the outside of the body. However, most of our cavities are internal. Body cavities have several important functions. Firstly, they protect delicate organs, like for example the brain, from bumps and shock when we walk, run and jump. Secondly, cavities allow internal organs to change shape and size. For example, our lungs, stomach and bladder can all expand and contract because they sit inside cavities. And lastly, Body cavities provide a warm, nurturing space for foreign creatures to implant into, grow, and burst from in the Alien movies. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. The human body consists of two main cavities. The dorsal body cavity and the ventral body cavity. If you're not sure what the terms dorsal and ventral mean, check out my other video on anatomical terminology. Let's start with the dorsal body cavity. It can be divided into two parts, the cranial cavity and the spinal cavity. The cranial cavity is the space formed by the bones of the skull. It contains the brain. The spinal cavity, which is sometimes also called the vertebral canal, is a space formed by the bones of the vertebral column. The spinal cavity contains the spinal cord. Next is the ventral body cavity. It can be subdivided into two parts, the superior thoracic cavity and the inferior abdomino-pelvic cavity, which is separated by a flat muscular sheet called the diaphragm. The thoracic cavity can be subdivided into the left and right pleural cavities and a central pericardial cavity. The pleural cavities contain the lungs and the pericardial cavity contains the heart. Separating these three cavities is a partition called the mediastinum. The abdomino-pelvic cavity can be subdivided into a superior abdominal cavity and an inferior pelvic cavity. The abdominal cavity contains the stomach, 
liver, spleen, kidneys, small intestine, and most of the large intestine. The pelvic cavity contains the bladder and internal reproductive organs. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more Human Biology Explained videos. And so first is let's have a um let's re, uh let's go through um I, let's go through everything again one by one. First is your dorsal body cavity. So this cavity protects your fragile nervous system organs. So your cranial cavity, no, that's in the skull, that's in your skull. It in create it encases your brain. Your vertebral or spinal cavity, they run within your bony vertebral column and encloses your delicate spinal cord. Your ventral body cavity, it's more anterior and larger of the closed body of the closed body cavity. Now that's your ventral body cavity. And it houses your internal organs, collectively called the viscera or your visceral organs. No, that's your thoracic cavity, thoracic cavity, and your uh, abdominal pelvic cavity. Uh, your abdominal pelvic cavity. So your thoracic cavity, this is a superior subdivision. Uh, it's surrounded by your ribs and your muscles of the chest. So your lateral pleural cavities, they each envelope a lung and the medial mediastinum so that's why i told you um you have to be well versed ano yung mga lateral anong superior because yun ang ginagamit na you we always utilize the directional terms so um your mediastinum they they contain the pericardial cav cavity that encloses the heart and also surrounds the remaining thoracic organs such as your esophagus, trachea, and others. So, separated from the more inferior ab abdominal pelvic cavity by the diaphragm. By the diaphragm. So, no, ang diaphragm ito sa separate. So, that's a dome-shaped muscle important in breathing. So, next is your abdominal pelvic cavity. First is your abdominal cavity. It's a more superior portion. It contains your stomach, your intestines, your spleen, your liver, and other organs. While your pelvic cavity naman, it's an inferior one. It lies in the bony pelvis and contains your urinary bladder, some reproductive organs, and the rectum. So, um, this one, regional na tayo. So, abdominal pelvic regions and quadrants. So, ito yun. Ito yun. Um, a transverse and median plane pass through the umbilicus at the right angle. So, ang palatandaan ng ating abdominal pelvic region quadrant is isang median and transverse plane. So, ayan, nagpo-form ng apat na right angles. So, first, no, this is very important even if you proceed to um, become a physician. This is what we utilize no, to localize pain. So, that's your right upper quadrant, your left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, right lower quadrant. Yan. So, there is also another system where we use two transverse and two parasitical planes. No? Yan. Right hypochondriac region, epigastric region, left hypochondriac region, left lumbar region, umbilical region right lumbar region, right iliac region, hypogastric region, left iliac region. Yan. So, in the future now, we do hypogastric pain, umbilical pain, epigastric pain. So, next is your oral and digestive cavities. Your oral cavity, commonly called the mouth, no, they contain your teeth and tongue and it's continuous with the cavity of the digestive organs which opens the body exterior at the anus. Your nasal cavity, it's a part of the respiratory system passageways that is located within and posterior to your nose. Your orbital cavity, 
to cater in the skull and houses your eyes and pre present them in an anterior position. Your middle ear cavity is, is, is also located in the skull and lies just medial to your eardrums. It contains tiny bones that transmit sound vibrations to the hearing receptors in your inner ear. Ayan. So next topic is we are going to um, talk about the cells. So thank you very much.